Hello clarinet students. I'm so glad we can continue our lessons this way. So feel free to pause the video whenever you need to work on something or, or get something. If you've already put your clarinets together, that's great. But I'm just going to review a little bit about the best way to put it together because sometimes that can be a bit difficult. Make sure you always put the two big pieces together first. And if this is the way they go, make sure you put your three fingers a bit like you do when you're playing. If you put them on the keys there, see how this metal bit goes up? And then when you put this in, it doesn't bang the metal pieces together. Okay, so they can slide together. And then you have to make sure that all these keys are lined up because that's where you put your fingers, right? So make sure that those are all lined up first. And then you put the bottom on, which is called the bell, right? For obvious reasons, that's called the bell. And the easiest way to do that is either is push it down on the table or on the chair. And then this part, which is called the barrel, again, if you just push it straight down, that's the best way of getting it on. When you take the mouthpiece, if you make sure the hole where you put your thumb, if you make sure that's facing you, and the hole where you put the reed is also facing you, then you can just push that down, okay? And then you see the hole where the reed is lined up with the hole where you put your left thumb, okay? Now, everybody knows that you need to put the reed in your mouth for a minute. Get that nice and wet, especially if you haven't played for a few days. You have to make sure it's nice and moist. And then you put that over. You can hold it with one thumb. And then you take your ligature. Your ligatures are silver and shiny. Mine looks a bit different. Pop that on and make sure the screws for the ligature are coming out the right side. Tighten down your ligature and you're ready to go. So if you need to get anything, make sure you have your book. Either put it on a stand or up on something you can see. If you don't have everything, pause the video here and get all ready to play. Make sure you have your neck strap and everything's all set. Make sure you adjust your neck strap so that you can go like this and the clarinet's right at the level of your mouth. Okay, you don't want to have to put your head down. Right, so make sure you, you tighten up your strap so that you can put that right on your teeth. Okay, without putting your head down. And we're going to start by playing our first five notes. This is what we often do at the beginning of every lesson. We, we play G, F, E, D, C, because you have no fingers for G, then you put your thumb down for F, next finger down for E, next finger down for D, and next finger down for C. So it sounds like this. Make sure your right thumb is right under that thumb rest, okay? And that the rest of your hand isn't touching the clarinet because it has the weight of the clarinet has to be taken by the strap and your right thumb so that the rest of the fingers can go up and down. So again, just with your left hand, let's play our five notes starting with G. If you want to pause the video and just work on those five notes for a bit, you can stop the video here. Great. Now that we've played our five notes, we're going to review a little bit about our note reading. So we have three notes that are on the lines, right? We have G. We have... C and we have E. Okay, those are the three notes on the lines. 
all right? C is very easy to recognize because it's on what we call the ledger line, which is below the staff. E is on the next line up, very easy to recognize because that's on the bottom line. And then G is on the next line up. Okay? And then we have two notes on spaces. We have D on the on the space below all the lines, and then we have F on the bottom space. Okay? So if you want to review your notes, make sure you look at page four and five. You can play some nice long notes and you can review how to read them by the lines and the spaces. You can also go over number 11, 12, and 13 on the bottom of page five, which are songs that we played a little bit at school. But those of you who were at our last lesson on Wednesday will know that we started on a song on page six called Hot Cross Buns. So if everybody wants to turn to their Turn their books to page six. About halfway down is number 17, Hot Cross Buns. And we're gonna learn this song today. And those of you who started on it can have another go at it. So this song only has three notes, E's, D's, and C's. So we start on E, which is what I sometimes refer to as the sandwich, because you have two notes, you have your thumb and your first finger. So we start on an E, we go to a D, and then we have a C. So it's just those three notes. And I'm going to play it, and I want you all to watch the, the notes from the beginning of the song, beginning of number 17. <laughs> that we have some different looking notes there. Even though the first note is an E, it doesn't have a solid middle. So it doesn't look like that with the solid middle. It's got an empty middle, which means it's two beats. Okay, so it's still an E, but we hold it a bit longer, we hold it for two beats. And the same thing with the next note, D is two beats, and the next note, C is two beats. And then we have a little black box sitting on top of the middle line and that is a two beat rest. So in the first two bars, it sounds like this. Rest, rest. So I want you to pause the video here and just play those two bars. You can play them over and over as many times as you want. Okay. And you might notice that the next two bars are exactly the same. We have another E, another D, and another C, and all of those notes are two beats, and then another two beat rest. And so if you look halfway through the song, we go back to solid black notes like this. You'll see, a, you'll see four Cs that look like that. And so those are one beat. And then there's four Ds. So I'm gonna play the four Cs and the four Ds. They sound like this. So if you want to pause the video there and just practice those two bars. Okay, so if you've got that much, then the last two bars are easy because they're just like the first two bars. We have a long E, a long D, and a long C. So just make sure after all those one beat notes that you go back to playing long notes again. So have a great time practicing this song. You can practice it over and over as many times as you want. You can go back to where I played the whole thing and listen to that. And hopefully next week or next time we have a lesson, we'll learn something new. Make sure you clean your clarinets properly and I hope to post a video soon about cleaning, just so you can watch that again. Bye for now.